Oh, hello everyone, hope you're having a fantastic day, and welcome to, or welcome back to, Mycorza, or Mycorza? No, Mycorza. It's either the H is completely silent and it's just Mycor Mycorza, or Mycorza. Let me know in the comments below how it's to be pronounced. <laughs> Because I didn't look it up ahead of time. Is it a game to a demo I played a long time ago of a game that was like a Junji Ito styled uh, visual novel horror? Which had, which like had really good depictions that were like very comparable to Junji Ito's like style. Um, and now the game is fully out. And of course, link in the description down below to the store page. It's not on Steam or not on Steam yet, but maybe one day. Maybe one day. We're going to get into it. The developer recommends replaying the original chapters because there's things changed and other things, updates, probably, you know, better uh, better storytelling, who knows? But they said to replay it, so we're going to go from scratch and we're going to just redo it. Welcome to a world of distorted minds. Hmm, yes. I'm just going to also lay back comfortably in my chair. Although I would be wondering if I would leave my webcam on or not. Like, I don't know if, like, in visual novels I want to primarily turn off my webcam so my face is in a distraction, or if the game's the type where I'll actually have reactions that some people want to see. I'll have to make that, you know, that, uh, differentiation, depending on the game, but, meh. My eyes were burning. It felt like hot coals were lying on my eyelids. I slowly opened them and attempted to heave myself up from the cold asphalt, but I failed. My whole body was heavy, and my head felt like it was being squashed by a hydraulic press. After a few attempts, I finally succeeded and tried to make out where I was. The fog in my mind lifted slowly and I realized that I was in a dark alleyway. My vision was still blurry and I had trouble keeping my eyes open, but I could tell that I had never seen this place before. Slowly, my heart began to race. Was I abducted? Mugged? What, hap what had happened to me? I hastily checked my body, fortunately finding no wounds. Why was I feeling this weak then? Maybe I was drugged. As I tried to recall what might have happened to me, my eyes finally focused. I could see a house in front of me. It was the only house on the street with its lights on. The dirty yellow glow shone through almost every single visible window. I felt some relief knowing that the tenants were awake. Perhaps they could tell me where I was. I approached the front door. It took me some searching to find the doorbell through the overgrown ivy. A deep gong rang from within the house when I pressed it. The sound amplified by the cold wind cutting through my shirt made me tense up. What an odd choice for a doorbell sound, I thought while rubbing my upper arms to warm myself. I waited. No one answered. My mind twisted in confusion. Why was no one coming? I rang the doorbell again. Then I tried knocking. No response. No one was coming. I didn't understand. Did they forget to turn off the lights and go on vacation? As a last resort, I tried turning the doorknob and... It actually opened. This worried me. Did something happen to the family living here? Perhaps I should find a phone and call the police. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed through the street. My heart started to pound as my body tensed up. I wanted to dash into the house, but my feet refused to move. What was that sound? Was someone out there? Pictures of otherworldly monsters and armed kidnappers popped into my mind as my eyes scanned the darkness. The world was silent once more. I was still on edge, but my body slowly started to relax as I regained my composure. I decided I didn't want to find out what that was. Cautiously, I stepped through the threshold and firmly closed the door behind me. I entered a dimly lit hallway. The contours of a minimalist furniture of the contours of minimalist furniture were illuminated by the street lights outside. I felt an immediate lurch of guilt as I was trespassing into a stranger's home. Hello? Is anyone here? No answer. The house was eerily quiet. I cautiously ventured further down the front hall and stopped in front of one of the doors. A dim yellow light seeped silently through the bottom crack. I turned the knob, 
Locked. Then the next one. Also locked. <laughs> also locked. They all seemed to be. I frowned. Why were the lights behind these locked doors lit? It gave me an uneasy feeling. The front door, or the door at the very end of the hall, was the only one that I hadn't tried yet. I grasped its handle and turned it slowly. It swung open to complete darkness. Once again, my body tensed up while my mind started to conjure horrific images. A beast with dislocated limbs and crooked teeth creeping towards me from the darkness. A floor littered with corpses and walls stained with blood. A giant spider sitting in a corner, waiting for its chance to strike. My hands shook as I reached to flick on the light. It was utterly... It was in utterly ordinary bedroom. My heartbeat slowly calmed down as I realized that I seemed to be safe. I felt almost silly getting scared of nothing. A quick search yielded nothing but barren, dusty shelves. The bed was the only meaningful object present. Slowly, but surely, a wave of fatigue washed over me. With my adrenaline rush fading away, I found that I was more exhausted than I had realized. Like a worm wiggling its way into an apple, a single thought slowly invaded my mind. I had to sleep. Trying to fight it made it worse, as if some outside power was affecting me. And it wasn't Bill Cosby's drugs. Sleeping in a stranger's bed in a stranger's home was the last thing I wanted to do right now. But it was soon the only thing I could think about as my consciousness faded. I had to sleep. The world turned dark and the soft covers of the bed pulled me deeper and deeper into the black abyss. It's almost like a, an Outer Limits kind of intro. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's maybe inspired by that. Welcome to the Outer Limits. Ah, uh, yes. Choose a door. If we do the left one, it'll probably do... I mean, it's probably chapter left to right, but wait. They said something at the start about it not mattering? I can't remember, though. But that was, I think, just the tutorial or the beginning. Um, hang on. I cannot save right here. Um, well, I picked the left door. Might as well go left to right. I think I recall the game before I started recording saying that there's no specific order. You don't have to do, really. Okay, and pets. Oh, wait. That's, oh, a scroll button. I was wondering what was on the top left. Hang on. Yeah, sure, let's save. The save button... Oh, the menu button's up there. I shot awake, panting heavily, my clothes sticking to my skin due to all the sweat. My eyes darted around the room, but everything was quiet. I seemed to be safe. A nightmare. Seems like I just had a nightmare. I couldn't remember it anymore, but it must have been horrifying. Chills were still running down my spine. It was just a dream. Just a nightmare. Nothing more. After calming down, I decided to take another look around the house. The fact that no one was here, even though the lights were on, was still nagging at the back of my mind. But I was more confident that I'd be able to find help now that it was daytime. I left the bedroom to retry the doors, just in case. They were still locked. I just wanted to go home and take a shower. I smelled my clothes, and they indeed had started to smell slightly sour. This place seemed to have nothing left to offer. I'd be better off in the streets now that it was daytime. If I wasn't missing my wallet, then I would be getting something to eat as well. I was starving. I left the house for the bright sunlight. The back street didn't seem so bad anymore. I found it to be rather cozy and quaint. We're going to probably be start saving it too as soon as the multiple choices start hitting in because I know there's multiple endings. Some much worse than the others, of course. I made my way down the path until I heard the faint sound of conversation in the distance. 
A weight lifted from my heart when I first glimpsed people walking around in a pedestrian area. There weren't many of them. As I looked around, I got the feeling that this was a rather small town. Trees and flowers were planted at regular intervals, which gave it more of a rural atmosphere. It didn't matter. I could finally ask her help. Excuse me, could you tell me where I am? The woman blinked at my approach. She frowned and scowled in my general direction. This is... Uh, Kahem... Kahamath? 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 I'm going to presume I'm pronouncing it right. Please tell me if I'm wrong. She looked uncomfortable talking to me, so I thanked her and let her be. It's like the feeling I got when I'm in Canada. If, you've ever, if you are Canadian and you've ever gone north of Toronto to a town called Barrie, Barrie, Ontario, that place the probably be is just like this, which is like, it always feels really weird when you're an outsider walking into that place. It's not even like a village village area, but it, it felt so uncomfortable going into that town because it felt like everyone knew I was an outsider and it always felt like people were watching me. It was the creepiest place I've ever gone to. And it didn't even look off atmospherically, like for a city or for like a suburban area. I just remember the first time I went to the place called Barry, it felt really awkward. Like I said, it felt like people were watching me or like it was wrong to be there. It was very weird. If anyone's been there though, and anyone's Canadian, let me know if you've experienced the same thing or if you've experienced the same thing, but just not in Barrie and just somewhere else in your country. Let me know in the comments. She looked uncomfortable talking to me. So I thanked her and let her be. I had never heard of a town with that name. Where did I end up? Where and how did I end up here? The thought of being somewhere I didn't recognize scared me. How was I supposed to get back home if I didn't have the slightest idea where to go? I took a deep breath to calm myself down. My next best bet would be asking someone to allow me to make a call from their mobile phone. I approached an older man in a business suit. Excuse me, may I use your phone? I'm a bit lost and would like to call a friend of mine so he can pick me up. His lips curled into a grimacing frown. Uh, sorry, I'm in a bit of a hurry. I approached a person after person, but I had no luck. No one wanted to lend an unkempt, half-dressed stranger their phone. As I made my way through the side street, I overheard two elderly women. I heard of some violent incidents recently. <laughs> Most got away with just a flesh wound, saying that they were attacked by someone or something. I heard that too. I wonder if it has anything to do with the pet disappearances. I heard of another cat that hadn't come back in several days. I was so focused on the conversation that I almost ran into a girl. I mumbled an apology until I realized that she had approached me on purpose. Hi. Hi. You need to call someone, right? She extended her hand and offered me her phone. How did you know? I've seen you asking people for one. She nervously shuffled her feet and glanced away. Thank you. I won't take long. I took her phone. It was a red flip phone with a small panda hanging from a strap. The top bar read, May's phone. Her background was set to a picture of herself in a pedestrian area. That place in the picture looked oddly familiar, but I was likely just imagining it. But I brushed that thought aside and dialed a friend's number. But the call didn't go through. I tried it again, but the result was the same. Maybe their phone was turned off. I tried my parents' house phone, then my job's front desk, then my boss's personal cell. Each time the call failed. I was sure that I had the right numbers. Maybe the phone had a bad connection. It seems like the calls don't connect for some reason. Hmm, maybe you will have more luck trying a landline. My phone does act up sometimes. You might be right, still. Thank you. I didn't want to hold her up any longer, so I gave her f the phone back. After a rushed farewell, I wandered off. I wanted to quickly look for another way to get in contact with someone I knew. It occurred to me that I should have asked her for directions to the police station. I turned to look for her, but she had already vanished. As I made my way through town, I could definitely feel the tension in the air. She was right, everyone was on edge. While I was passing by an alleyway, something caught my eye. They were too big to be rats. I couldn't really make anything out other than their eerie, glowing eyes. Maybe it was a cat gang searching the trash for food. A propus food. I was starving. I don't even know what that word is, man. I've never pronounced that before. <laughs> but I couldn't possibly ask random people to feed me. And since my wallet was missing, I didn't have any money on me to buy something. I mean, if you're in a little rural village, I mean, 
usually it's like village people are one of the nicest people. If you go out to the boonies, man, the culture of both food culture and hospitality is typically really high, unlike the city people. City folk, you know, you're, you're just trash. You're just in their way. But if you go to a village and you really look like you need help and you don't look like a creepo, I'm sure there'll be a bunch of people who'll be like more than willing to help or give you food. Like you just go to a some kind of restaurant and be like, "Hey, can I have some scraps? I have no idea where I'm at, and I'm I'm not a drug addict." And I'm sure there'd be places that'd be more than willing to be like, "Sure, buddy." But yeah, uh, since my wallet was missing, I didn't have any money on me to buy something. Though there were oddly tempting-looking plants growing nearby, buds fixed on thick stems were sticking out of the ground. Totally not uh, conspicuous, apparently. Each plant was surrounded by a number of small mushrooms. As I stared at them, I felt a pull. Their strange appearance hypnotized me, and without noticing, my feet inched closer and closer and closer. And this is the part where we save. And we're going to eat them, just for uh, This is not the choice I would... Uh, whoa, the mouse cursor's actually moving. Oh man, that's cool. Ugh. Oh, oh shit! No. That is actually really, really cool. The mouse cursor, like legit, when you move it, if when you move the mouse cursor over the "Don't eat them," the mouse cursor actually starts dragging. Like, let's say, I'll move it, and then you'll see the red bar. Since you can't see my mouse cursor, actually, you'll see. I'll see if I can turn that off. Hang on. Okay, there we go. Okay, now you can see the mouse cursor. Watch, watch. Oh. Like, I try to drag it away, and then it drags it back. Oh, that's cool. It's much better if I can show the mouse cursor at this rate, so I'll, I'll keep it on. Especially if this didn't happen before. That's really cool. But yeah, let's eat them, then. I couldn't really think while well, hungry, and who knew how long it had been since I had eaten. So it was probably either this or starving. I dug in. They didn't even taste that bad. Kind of grassy, but edible. Although it grew harder and harder to chew with every bite, something red dripped onto the ground. I soon realized that a liquid was coming out of my mouth. I couldn't tell if it was blood or the plant's juices. More started to pour out as I panicked and tried to figure out what was going on. While feeling around my mouth, I realized that it had become totally numb. Suddenly, a fleshy chunk fell into the red pool that had started to form before my feet. Was... was that my tongue? My vision became blurry and my stiff body hit the cold ground. It was dark when I awoke. I could make out that I was still lying next to the plants. It seemed like no one had bothered to help me. I tried to get up, but I couldn't. My whole body was paralyzed. I felt a sudden sting traveling from my head to my feet and the pain grew by the second. Something was happening to me. Ugh. Just, just close your eyes. It'd be better if you closed your eyes, I would say. My hand. It was being bent into impossible positions. Not just my hand, my whole body. It was warping. But it seemed like it couldn't handle the transformation. My body writhed. And snapped in two. Give up? Well, what? I mean, if give up, does that quit the game or go to the main menu? Oh, yeah, okay. Load. Don't eat them. I broke away from the hypnotic pull of the plants. What was I thinking? It didn't matter how hungry I was. They may be poisonous. But my hunger was beginning to knot my insides. My vision grew blurry. Who knew how long it had been since I'd eaten? Suddenly I collapsed and the world around me vanished. It was dark when I awoke. It seemed like no one had bothered to help me. I tried to get up, but I couldn't. My whole body was paralyzed from hunger. Something was shuffling by my ear. I felt the sniffing of an animal. Perhaps one of those cats I saw earlier. I couldn't bring myself to look. It lost interest and walked past me toward the plants. I heard more follow. As they padded into view, I noticed that something was off about them. It must have been my mind playing tricks on me. My hunger was overwhelming. Something about their bodies was wrong. They started to eat the plants. 
They were smacking rather loudly and made unnaturally fleshy sounds. Every now and then, one would pause and give off a low growl that didn't at all sound like a cat's. It was more like a slightly higher-pitched bear growl. After a while, the sounds diminished and I had felt their presence vanish. I gathered my strength and forced myself to my feet. What had just happened? What were those creatures? The violent crimes that I had heard about earlier popped into my mind. My hands began to shake. What would have happened if I hadn't been paralyzed and if they had noticed that I was still alive? I took a cautious look around. Most house lights were still lit. Must I must have... I mustn't have been out for long. Once again, my body gave off a deep growl. It was as if my stomach was eating itself. Yeah, that is exactly what happens when you haven't eaten, and then, you know, it starts angrily eating your long-term energy source, a.k.a. your fats. Your lipids, if I recall. Yes, science facts, yes. <laughs> I had to get some food or else I was in danger of collapsing again. I mean, even if you just drank water, and just, just draw it over to hold yourself off for a bit, you know? Um... Then we can save here, yes. We have, uh, we don't have an infinite amount of save slots, but I guess it's like, if we finish an entire door and get all the branches, then I'm sure we can delete the saves and go to the next door, perhaps. Um, let's look around first. No one would help, uh, no one would open their door for a disheveled stranger. Instead of wasting my time going from house to house, I should take another look around town. I should be able to find a police station eventually. I picked a random direction and headed off. But I soon realized that finding a police station proved to be more difficult than expected. The streets were completely empty, meaning I couldn't ask anyone for directions. And the further I went, the more I abandoned the more abandoned the apartment buildings looked. Did I wander into a deserted part of town by accident? The street looked oddly familiar though. As I wandered through the dark alleyways, an odd feeling started to well up within me. It felt as if I was being watched. I took a look around. My eyes scanned the buildings, which were barely, which were being barely illuminated by the dim street lights. I spotted something at the entrance of an alleyway. It looked like a small figure. Whatever it was, it was too dark to make out. My eyes were probably just playing tricks on me. It must have been a garbage can or something, right? I tried to rationalize what I had seen and continued at a faster pace. Was I overreacting? Just like all the other times? <laughs> There's not one way to find out. I made a sharp turn away from the main street and abruptly stopped. If someone really was following me, then I would be able to ambush them as they entered this alleyway. I realized too late that they would have had the advantage if they had a weapon with them. Someone was there. I braced myself. Right as they were about to turn into the alleyway, I jumped out, fists raised. The person gave me a shriek and stumbled backwards, falling onto the floor. Just as I was about to question them why they were following me, I realized they weren't a threat. The person who had followed me was a small boy. He looked at me, his eyes filled with fear. Why... why were you following me? I slowly unclenched my fists. I need help for my sister. Your sister? He seemed to realize I wasn't planning to hurt him and slowly got up. Yeah, she's hurt. I was only following you to see if you were one of them. I had a ton of questions, but if his sister was in danger, then my first priority should be helping her. Alright, show me where your sister is. His face brightened and he led me back down the way I had just come from. Now that I knew he wasn't... Now that he knew that I wasn't trying to hurt him, he became quite talkative. I'm Lanny, by the way. My sister's name is Amy. We're currently hiding from those pets in one of the abandoned houses. Have you seen one yet? They're really scary. His words were flowing out like a waterfall as he made a short pause to breathe. I quickly intersected. What pets are you talking about? What did you mean when you said I wasn't one of them? You really don't know. Hmm. Well, I don't really know how to explain it. He seemed to be in deep thought. But before he could elaborate, we had already arrived. Amy is in here. We were standing in front of an old abandoned house. Several of the windows were broken. One of them was partly boarded up with wooden planks. Lanny stopped in the entryway. I was about to ask him what we were waiting for when he started whistling quietly. It was a slow and somber melody that reverberated through the empty halls of the building. The atmosphere it created sent shivers down my spine, and then it was over. Lanny stepped into the hallway and I followed quickly behind him. Seeing how stumped I was, he explained. Oh, wait, what? Did I just rest read? Wait, 
I can't, can I, I can't go backwards, can I? God damn it. If she hears someone come in, she's supposed to run away, unless I whistle this melody. I came up with it today. <laughs> Pretty good, eh? The melody, I mean. The plan was alright, I guess. But it was Amy's. I was like, just trying to say, like, when I do a mouse wheel, normally the mouse wheel makes it so you can go backwards? Maybe it's a different control. Advances dialogue. Oh, navigate the interface. Maybe it's just the, uh, the arrow keys. Oh, wait. Also, we can open up text history. Let's do that, actually. Peg up. Ah, uh, let's see. Then he stepped in the hallway and I followed quickly behind him, seeing how stumped I was, he explained. Ah. Oh. Okay. So if I want to reread something, although it means two, if I go arrow keys now, okay, so I, I can't scroll backwards with mouse wheel like some other uh, visual novel games, not to keep that in mind, not to accidentally misclick and then miss some text. We, who made our way inside, walked up the stairs and stopped in front of a dark room. Not far from the entrance, I could make out a shadowy figure sitting on the ground. Amy, it's me. I, I brought someone. Amy parked up as she heard her brother's voice. I quickly stepped inside and was about to rush to her, uh, rush to her side, but jerked back. Her... her arms. Yeah, that seems, uh, kind of painful. What happened? I had whispered... I had whispered it, but it seemed like Amy had heard me nevertheless. I ate a piece of the plants. Then my arms began to hurt, and now... She broke off. How could eating a piece of plant have caused this? This didn't make any sense, but I had more urgent things to do at the moment. Does one of you have a telephone? We need to call an ambulance. Lainey looked at me apologetically. There's no one at the hospital. They're all either dead, or they're too obsessed with the pets. No one at the hospital. And he had mentioned those pets again. Just what the hell is going on here? Just as I was about to ask, I heard a thumping sound from within the house. Lainey jerked around, fear-stricken. Is it them? Amy's voice was weak. She was about to faint. Her arms must have been causing her a lot of pain. I'll check it out. You two stay here. I try to sound confident, but my voice shook slightly. After what Lanny had told me, I couldn't help but feel scared. But as the only adult here, I had to be the one to protect them. And so I slowly made my way back down the stairs. I had heard something yet again. It sounded vaguely like a growl. One that was oddly similar to the one I had heard while I was laying in the alleyway. Could it be one of those... pets? As I reached the bottom of the stairs, I could vaguely make out some slight movement further down the hall. It was as if something was sniffing the air. I looked around to see if I could use anything as a weapon. There was indeed a wooden board lying on the ground near a window next to me. I carefully picked up and gripped it tightly while inching closer and closer towards the creature. <laughs> towards the creature? Weirdly enough, it seemed like it was ignoring me. As I was almost close enough to make out what it looked like, it perked up. I stopped. Time seemed to slow to a halt. A foul feeling slowly spread throughout my stomach. I lifted the board up a bit higher and readied myself to attack, and then it lunged. I closed my eyes and fled the wooden plank in the general direction of the creature, but only hit empty air. It was over, I thought. I had missed and now it would kill me. But nothing happened. All I heard was something scurrying up the stairs. I opened my eyes and whipped my head around towards the source of the sound. But the creature had already reached the top of the stairs and then I heard a scream. It was Lanny. Man, did you let the captain go after the girl, you useless bastard? I ran upstairs. Amy was still lying in the same spot, but it seemed like she had fallen, finally fallen unconscious. Next to her was a bloody trail leading into another room. Lanny couldn't have been. A sound of breaking bones and fleshy smacking leaked out of the room. I knew what was happening without having to see it. I left my weapon without even thinking, and was just about to step closer to the room's entryway, but I stopped. There was no way I could fight whatever it was with a rotting wooden plank. And I couldn't save Lanny anymore. It was too late. I needed to get out of here. No. More importantly, I needed to get Amy out of here. There had to be someone out there who could help us. Lanny's words echoed in my head, but he couldn't have been right. The police would do something about this, wouldn't they? Or the military? I was about to go back towards Amy, but a sudden wave of fatigue came over me. It was as if I had stepped into a veil. The air had gotten heavier and my breathing became more ragged. I clutched my chest as if to hide, as if I as I tried to figure out what was going on. A throbbing pain pulsed through my back. It was as if something had stabbed me. I tried to turn around, but I'd already become too weak. My feet gave in, and my vision darkened. I could feel a presence near me. Was it that monster? Before I could find out 
my consciousness had faded. Hmm. Well then. Is that that entire door? Huh. Well then. I guess we may as well... I mean, if that's like the pet's door... Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let me try. I'm going to... I, I don't know if it, how it continues, though. Okay, hang on. Because I know do ask for, asking for help should... Like, unless it's really changed, I'm going to see how much it's changed, though, of ask for help. I'm sure that they'd turned me away, but I was desperate. This was an emergency after all. We could probably try to do one chapter or the one book per video, depending on just how long. Because I know this, if it's the same as the demo, should lead into what I remember of like the basement and caged creatures or something. We'll see if it has changed and it always leads to the boy and if it's linear or not. And certainly, I approached the closest house and knocked. Oh. Oh, it is. Okay, so maybe you should... Because then this episode will probably take like 40 to 60 minutes. We might have to do two different playthroughs for each thing. So, all right, all right. Let me, yes. I will take a look around and skip, 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 skip. Skip, 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 skip. And reach. Because there's one thing. I'll save it like right here. Because on the second playthrough, or next video then, I will do the ask for help and do that playthrough. Because the one thing I will, not, I will not know is whether or not when we reach the, the doors, is if the progress of what we're doing, and then we go to the next one, does it continue from where we left off of the child then? I'm going to presume that's a yes. So, butterfly effect-wise, there should... I, I would imagine, like, it would continue off. We'll have to find that out in the next episode, if we are a different character, or if it proceeds into the second story of some way. We'll find out, but in the next episode. But hey, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please leave a like, comment, hit that subscribe button, become a subscriber. Hit the bell notification down below for updates on my videos. Thank you for watching, until the next time.